good evening good morning and good afternoon to everybody watching across the world and we are here together for our second so, book club good evening good morning and good and uh, for the second book club i'd like to hand it over to our moderator and editor of the book dr firas over to you dr firas for for the proceeding Thank you very much, uh, Ashok, and uh, thanks to all the audience and all the authors uh, who have attended uh, today. I'm just trying to share screen. I hope you can see my screen. So the title of the book, of our book, is Concise Orthopedic Notes. Um, and I'm the editor of the book, and there are associate editors here with me today. They will come on board. And also the authors of the chapters and our illustrator as well. Uh, so we've got the whole team today to explain to you all aspects of the book. I'll be very brief. First of all, I would like to thank Ortho TV team, particular Ashok and Niraj. They've been very dynamic, uh, forward-thinking team. They've changed how the orthopedic education and communication have changed all over the world. And this particular initiative of orthopedic club, which is, I think is the first of its kind, is, is amazing and good opportunity for us to tell the audience all over the world about our book. So today we will um, start with general introduction about the book, it will be very brief. Um, we'll have the foreword from our senior uh, author and uh, mentor, Mr. Mahalab Zumavala, who's written the foreword of the book. Um, and we will then we'll have at least one author from each chapter of the book telling us about their, chap their book chapter, how they've written it, what are the contents of it, and how, well, you know, give you some examples of the topics covered. And we have the pleasure also of having um, our illustrator as well, who's an orthopedic surgeon. Um, so he's he's you know, double talented as a surgeon as an artist. He's done amazing illustrations, which you will see. So why we think this book is is the best? Why is it different from other books? There are hundreds of orthopedic books, and especially for exams, there is you know so many book exam books written all over the world for postgraduate orthopedic exam. But however, what we found is during our preparation is there is a big gap. So most of the books cover only one aspect of the exam. They either cover the theory or they cover the practical parts. And even those who cover uh, these aspects, they tend to focus on one aspect of it. For example, only on trauma or only on basic sciences. And not only this, they, they more focus on the knowledge uh, and they overload the reader with knowledge sometimes. That could be a little bit confusing to us. We are all very busy um, and, and we all know the knowledge, but we want to know what exactly is required for exams. So we find this, this big, um, big sort of requirements lost uh, and we, that's what we try to fill in with our book. We thought that most of other books are outdated in comparison to our book. And why? That's because we are always in touch with candidates. We as um, authors from the uh, FRCS mentor, we have been running orthopedic teaching now for the last three years. We, every exam, uh, we are in touch with the candidates who do the exam, who've passed the exam and who failed the exam. And we hear the reviews and we hear the questions they asked. So anything that's new, anything that's changed, anything that we have missed, we always keep it, uh, keep track of that and we add it to the book all the time. So we are in touch all the time with candidates, unlike other books where the authors, mainly senior authors who've uh, done the exams many years ago and they lost touch and they're just writing what they thought about it um, you know, from their perspective. So we are in touch with the candidates, not only be, uh, through our FRCS mentor, which we provide weekly uh, free to attend um, webinars every Wednesday, but we also run FRCS courses, formal FRCS courses, uh, virtual FRCS courses. So we're always involved in teaching for the FRCS exams and for all postgraduate orthopedic exams. We, um, the other aspect that's why we think our, our book is different is that most of RCS books focus on the UK candidates or UK trainees. Uh, and they forget all about the international trainees and international candidates. And the inter almost the international FRCA is completely forgotten about and not covered in any other um, books. Um, 
we understand from our backgrounds how international candidates might find a slightly different way of how they want to express themselves and how they acquire knowledge and how they present this knowledge. And we have adopted that in the book. So the targets are, you know, anyone preparing for any postgraduate orthopedic exam uh, around the world. We covered the whole syllabus and we cover the theory part as well as the viva and the clinical parts of, uh, of the exams in this book. The structure of the book, it is very concise. It's a sort of bullet point style. And um, I'll show you some examples. So, so bear with me while I try to share. Um, that uh, for I'm just going to display the book how it um, so this is if you can see this is how it is, comes up on the online version on the ebook uh, which is available on um, Google Books so you could see here for example this is a, just an example I've put it on it's about free body diagrams yeah so you can, if you try to approach this topic in any other book, you will have to read about 10 pages to understand the hip free body diagrams. And by the end of these 10 pages, you'll be lost. What we've done here, we have summarized all of that. We've summarized every single concept that has been tested in the exam in half a page with a clear diagram that could be reproduced on the exam day with ease. So we are all busy, we have clinics, we have patients, we have theaters, and these sort of bite-sized topics can be easily reviewed in, in, in 10 minutes between the cases. And I guarantee you, this covers almost 90% of what any candidate has been asked in their, in their FRCS exams. For example, for hip diagram, it describes what kind of lever it is, how it's calculated, and the commonly asked questions on how to reduce hip joint reaction forces with a diagram that's easily reproducible. And we know that other these concepts can be made a lot more complex than this one. Uh, but however, we, we have kept it to what exactly is being required for the exam standard without over complicating things. And I will leave it also to, um, to uh, my the co-authors and illustrator to show you the amazing illustrations that have been done throughout the book and, and how they are simple and reproducible. And, and not only this, um, we have also, um, uh, you can see my screen now, I think how, how, how I'm, I'm going through topics. Um, and as, as I click on any topic, for example, it just tells you concise, focused manner about um, um, about each topic, for example, and if, if they say, um, yeah, bone graft, you got here bone graft, and, and we've covered the evidence required for each of these. Um, you can see, for example, coming asked question in the exam is the cutting cone and you go through, it's very difficult to find an easy reproducible image of the cutting bone. So we've searched a lot, we've done a lot of search and work, and this um, cutting cone example for, you know, it has taken days of work to come up with this simple drawing that simplify the whole concept. So to supplement that also, we've put barcodes, which my colleagues will show you. These barcodes, um, they have some useful lectures which have been carefully selected that are free to view. And you can just scan the code on your device and, and view this lecture that's of relevance to the topic you are reading. We've also summarized the evidence. So for example, if there's any new paper that comes up, that's will be useful to quote in an exam situation. We put the paper, 
we put the name of the authors, the journal, and the year it was um, it was uh, published, and we put three to four lines maximum of what are the key learning messages that could be quoted in the exam. So we've summarized all of that, and that's for those people who want to really be high scholars. One other positive aspect of our book is that we are in close in touch with our readers. We listen to the feedback carefully and take it seriously. We have created this Telegram group, which you could find it, is the name of Concise Orthopedic Notes, where we have the readers there, we share comments, we share feedback, any clarification that's required, and, and, and we take all comments and feedback from readers very seriously. And, and it, the comments we've received resulted in a lot of changes in the book content. And because this book is self-published, we have the flexibility of amending the contents of the book at any time we like and republish it immediately. It takes only a few minutes. And uh, just to finish off my part, um, I just want to say, as I said, please join us on the Telegram group, this, this one, Concise Orthopedic Notes. And also, um, this is our official email, the frcsmentor at gmail.com. And uh, all Ortho TV followers are entitled to 25% discount on the paper book as well as the ebook. Just email, email us on this email, the frcsmentor at gmail.com, and we'll send you information on how to get it. Just quote the Ortho TV um, uh, code, please. So uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry it took uh, um, more than five minutes, but I'll, uh, I'll move on and hand over uh, now to my colleagues. So uh, next is um, uh, Mr. Malak Samuvala, who has uh, kindly written the foreword for the book. He's very experienced uh, senior consultant from the UK, and he's very active in education for the FRCS and postgraduate exams in courses, uh, very, very active. He has his own course, and he also take, take part in many other courses. So I'm very happy and privileged that he's joining us today, and he's also written the foreword for the book um, and he's also a very, very active trainer in, in the London uh, deaneries. So I'll hand over to Mr. Malak Savala now. Thank you, Firas. Uh, can you, is it all, can you see me? Is it all right, Firas? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, so, thank you. So, uh, thank you, Firas. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. Ashok Sham and Dr. Neeraj and everyone at Ortho TV. It's a fantastic platform with a global reach, and it's a real privilege for having a link for FRSS Mentor with them. Now, uh, I was delighted when uh, Dr. Ferraz Arnott asked me to write a foreword for this book, Concise Orthopedic Notes. And the reason I say this is that it's a book where all the authors are specialists. They have all passed the FRSS auth examination, and the sole focus and the sole target of this entire group is only on passing the FRCS auth, both. And like Firas says, it's the UK version. We are all based in the UK, but clearly we have the international audience in mind. Okay, so it's FRCS auth UK, FRCS international, the and the other board examinations. Uh, the, this book is unique and different from other books in a few uh, points, which I like to say. Firstly, and most importantly, all the information and the substance of the book has been obtained from the authors of many years, three years of a weekly online Viva sessions. Now, please understand, this is going on for three years. Every author has contributed to it. And therefore, this is held every Wednesday. And therefore, this means the authors truly know which concepts are difficult for the candidates, and these have been addressed in the book, like Fira said. And I really feel this is a very unique point, which no other book has targeted. And this has come, like I said, with the weekly Wednesday teaching. Secondly, without hesitation, I can clearly add that even though the book is titled Concise Orthopedics, it is comprehensive. It has all the knowledge you need to pass the examination. But once again, and the reason I say it, and I'm, I, I feel I was very happy to uh, write a forward for this book, 
is that the book is re the information is retainable. There are many books. You have huge information, fantastically written books targeted at an audience where retainment is not necessary. But for us as examine going candidates, retainment is important. So this book gives you that retainment and more example, the reproducibility of saying something after you've got the knowledge. Thirdly, the book is contemporary and that by contemporary it means that it endorses correct good practice in the UK with guidelines and recent papers. So you have the confidence of what you say is correct UK practice with guidelines which are recent and like Farah said it is so interactive that we can change in a minute and we've already in discussions for the next uh, edition at some stage. Uh, in conclusion therefore I've been involved with FRC SWOT teaching in the UK for at least over 15 years as a consultant and in my capacity as a co-director of the Royal College of Surgeons of uh, England FRCS court, I completely endorse this book. I myself use it as a guide when I'm invited to give lectures. So I really, I use it for topics which I'm not familiar with all the time. So it's my book as a guide when I'm give, give, when invited to give lectures. And I have my London and Cambridge trainees who and registrars who work with me. And I insist that this book is bought or used because I feel this book covers what they need from year one to year four as to when they give the exam. So I, I, I hope that the authors as we go through will go through all the different topics and hope it's uh, useful for all the audience as these book clubs are new, all this is new on Zoom. So I'm glad once again, Ortho TV and FRC spent uh, more or less the first to kick off on this. Thank you very much for us and uh, Ashok. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Mr. Max and Vala for uh, the nice forward. I uh, appreciate your uh, views and comments. So we, without uh, further ado, so we'll move on now to the next um, speaker. Um, we have a Britom Shinoy. He is um, a surgeon, orthopedic surgeon, obviously, from the UK, and he's written the general guidance chapter. So over to you, um, Britom. So thanks very much, Firas. Um, so I hope everybody can hear me and can see the screen in front. Um, yes. So uh, thanks again to Ortho TV for this platform, and I thank Firas for uh, the opportunity to write on this. Um, it's it's a chapter which, as I was thinking and uh, trying to uh, put my words down. I was just going about what my experience was when I gave the FRCS and uh, it was very difficult to find information with regards to it. You can always speak to people who've given it, but um, I wanted to put things down in, on paper with which uh, my experiences were uh, particularly special. And then there were some things which I think are quite important, uh, which people generally forget to tell you, uh, which I have put in, in the chapter. So uh, in terms of the introduction, as uh, has been mentioned previously, uh, this book not just concentrates on the FRCS or based in the UK, but uh, also focuses on the FRCS International, also uh, on the FEBOT and CCOT diploma. But it can be translated to pretty much any orthopedic exam all over the world because essentially the content's going to be the same. The important thing about the book is everything is simplified uh, in a manner which is understandable, easy to digest and reproducible. So uh, in this particular chapter, I, I gave essentially the general approach to the theory exam uh, or the uh, uh, multiple choice online exam and also the clinical and viva uh, section to it. The theory exam is fairly similar to whatever exam that you sit that's been mentioned here. Uh, most of them are online these days uh, and uh, have either one or two papers. The only uh, difference would be the CCOT, which is a paper-based exam. Uh, but with the COVID pandemic, I'm sure they, they're going to have to rethink that and change that in the future. Um, so the FRCS Auth and International essentially have uh, two papers, both of which are given on the same day. Uh, so it's quite quite a hard thing for you to be sitting for about four and a half hours in front of a computer and uh, churn, you know churning your brain to uh, to do all this. So paper one for the FRCS is generally a single best answer. You have uh, two hours to answer about 110 questions, and in the afternoon you generally have two and a half hours to answer about 135 extended matching questions. Uh, format, which is uh, a lot more harder than people think. It's very difficult to prepare. And I found 
the material which I had online wasn't up to scratch with what I got in the exam. So it is definitely something where knowledge is key and this book helps with that. Uh, you usually get your results for the FRCC in about four weeks and the results are dependent on the performance of the whole cohort. So there's no fixed uh, sort of score, but it's generally in the region of 60 to 70%. Uh, with regards to the FEBOT, which is the fellowship of the European Board of Orthopedics and Traumatology, based in Switzerland, uh, it's an exam which is held yearly in uh, different centers all over Europe. Um, with the theory bit of it, uh, they're held in multiple centers all over Europe. It's online, as I said, uh, and you usually get 100 multiple choice questions in three hours, which is plenty of time. Uh, for the diploma CCOT, again, it's 100 questions over two hours, and it's paper-based for now. Uh, for the clinicals and why a bit of it, uh, in terms of the UK exam, uh, you're tested on having a knowledge base for a day one orthopedic consultant in a district general hospital. So it's very stringent and you have to have the attitudes and behavior of one when you're doing the exam. Um, so for, for the clinicals, they're divided into uh, four sections. You have short cases for long uh, lower limb and upper limb. You could have a mixture of other things here, uh, with, whether it's spine or... Um, uh, you know, any other pathology, you could have a mix. Uh, but generally, this is how they're divided. And for the intermediate case, you will have an upper limb or a lower limb. Again, you could have a spine, such as a scoliosis or something like that, thrown into the mix. Um, generally, each section is about 15 minutes. Uh, for the lower limb, because you have three cases, you have five minutes for each case. And it's unbelievable how quick uh, all that goes through. Uh, I've always felt the sh short cases are a bit unfair because you don't get any history. You, you, you dive straight in and examine the patients, which is not what, what you normally would do when you see a patient in clinic. But again, practice is key. Um, for the Viva section, which is held on a separate day, uh, you usually have uh, four stations, uh, 30 minutes each. You have two examiners on each, and it, the topics covered are adult pathology, trauma, pediatric orthopedics in hand, and applied basic sciences. You generally get results in two weeks. The FRCS International is fairly similar, but uh, can differ based on the location. Um, one of the exams held in the Middle East uh, suggested that uh, there was only one intermediate case for 20 minutes and four short cases of five minutes each. I suppose it's dependent on the case load in, in that particular center, and that could change. Uh, the VIVA section, though, is fairly similar to the uh, exam held in the UK. Um, the FEBOT exam is uh, only for specialists who are working in the U EU. Or you don't necessarily have to have European citizenship. Even if you're a non-EU citizen, working in the EU is essential for you to be uh, giving this exam for you to apply. The backside is, uh, the downside is you have to be a specialist, whether it's in India or uh, anywhere in Asia or anywhere in the world or in the UK to be giving this. Um, again, uh, after your theory, uh, you are given a date for your viva, which is a separate uh, exam. Uh, in a, and for that, you might have to travel to a place within Europe. Uh, the exams this year have been postponed because of COVID to next year. Uh, I think they're going to be held in Belgium. Uh, so the viva component covers five stations, 30 minutes each, again, on upper limb, lower limb, spines, uh, pediatric orthopedics and trauma, and basic sciences. Uh, the Diploma CCOT exam is held only for members, so you have to uh, apply for a membership prior to applying for the exam. Uh, again, uh, the VIVA section, you have uh, four uh, areas of uh, four stations, which are 30 minutes each. Again, basic sciences, trauma, spine, lower limb, and upper limb, pediatric orthopedics for that. Uh, for, particularly for the UK exam, you'll know your center well in advance. It's, it's always good that you do some research work into it. Uh, because there, there will be certain areas of expertise for with dealing with either certain pathologies, uh, which, you know, if, if, if you're aware of that, you will most certainly get during your exam. So it's always good to know, particularly for the short cases where you don't get a history, uh, and most of them are spotters, uh, it's quite vital information. Uh, I always, you know, I prefer to attend courses prior to it. It gives you good preparation, puts you in the hot seat, but they can be quite expensive. So uh, you, you have to sort of sift through as to which one is suitable for you and usually asking your peers and things does help. Um, there's nothing which, uh, you know, practice, practice, practice is the key for this exam, uh, whether you're talking to people at home, your wife, your kid, your dog, whatever, your, your mirror, you get an opportunity, you have to practice because communication is key. Uh, not all of us are talented enough to be uh, speaking nonstop uh, with, with all of this. So it's extremely important that uh, you, you keep practicing. Book a hotel close by. Uh, this is very important. There's no point you booking somewhere where it's cheap 
then having to drive down, searching for parking, it's very stressful on the day if not needed. Just spend that extra money, stay close by if needed within the uh, same hotel as the exam as well. Uh, avoid any last minute coming. Just you know, take it easy. This is a very stressful situation for everybody. Uh, you need to have your a uh, clear mind when you give this exam, and that's that's very important. So in terms of the chapter highlights, it gives you for the clinicals what to expect, how you need to dress. You know, bare below the elbow is essential these days, especially now with COVID. Uh, it, you know, um, it, it's going to be a bit of time before things normalize, uh, particularly for the exams. I think the most recent cohort was all uh, just you know, uh, based on a laptop uh, and theoretical situation more than anything else. Very important is listen carefully to what the examiner tells you. The last thing you want to do is keep answering what you think he's told you. That will just irritate him and lead to your downfall. Um, work on your approach to the patient and the cases uh, and to the short cases, get to the point. Uh, if you know what the case is, say what it is and move on. Because uh, if you keep dwelling on it, you'll find that you, you, you lose the time very quickly. Cases may not be repeated, so don't you know, if you're on the second day of the clinical exam, don't just think that because there are cases on the first day, that's what's going to be repeated. You will be surprised and find that they have a whole different set of uh, patients for that one. Uh, in terms of the vivas, very important to practice, uh, practice higher order thinking, which means uh, you have to understand why a particular question is asked, uh, tailor your uh, answers to that, and, uh, you know, demonstrate that you are thinking as to what a consultant is uh, and you know understand what the limitations of uh, the process is and verbalize that. Uh, you have to maintain proper etiquette during the exam. Draw when possible. Big, clear drawings and very simple ones. The examiners like to see things. Suppose you'd ask something on brachial plexus. Make sure it's nice and legible. Last thing you want is to draw something very small. Have the examiner strain over and not know what you're trying to say. Um, quoting evidence, do only if you're very sure, uh, you know, that is definitely something which will get you marks, but be very careful when you do so. Most important, if you're done badly in a particular station, forget about it, move on. Otherwise, you keep dwelling on it, it can cause you downfall. Uh, and develop tactics for specific exams, uh, specific stations. This has been discussed in the chapter. Marking system is there. Uh, for the FRCS, you have four, five, six, seven, eight uh, for every section. You have 96 opportunities. Uh, and maximum mark of 768 and a pass mark of 576 is plenty of opportunities to make up if you're not done well in a particular area. You have to score on average of six in all these sections. So uh, don't, again, dwell if you've done badly in one or two. You can make up for that. So uh, all the best, and um, uh, uh, I'd like to pass it back to Firas so that uh, we can get on with it. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity. That's lovely, Pritom. Thank you very much for covering the general guidance. Uh, it's a huge, uh, obviously, topic, and, uh, and you'll find it uh, further explained in the chapters. Now we'll uh, move on to the next uh, part, uh, which is the illustrations. Um, and uh, this has been done by uh, Ahmed al -Tambouli. He is an orthopedic surgeon working in Kuwait. Um, so he is uh, over to you, Ahmed, uh, to uh, tell us how you got around doing those amazing illustrations. We can see your screen. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. If you can share the screen again, please. Yes, I will. So I'm Ahmad Tambouli, I'm the illustrator of the book. I'm from Egypt, working in Kuwait. This is my hostel, Jar Hostel in Kuwait. I'd like to thank uh, Ortho TV for guiding us, giving us the opportunity to show you how this book was created. It's a great new experience for me to practice this such book. I had joined the team on 1st of January, 2020. This means one year now, through a telegram. This was the first message between me and Dr. Faraz, on 1st of January. This is the last message. Between us now, there's 1,178 photos shared between us, revising every, everything. My job was to illustrate the very good writing of the book in a clear, neat, yet simple way, in order to help the readers to easily remember and recall the data. 
Some pictures took too much time, as Dr. Frass said in the early, and discussion between me and Dr. Frass to get the idea and to introduce unique work and pictures. Our book has nearly 300 illustrations. This book upgraded ourselves continuously, even weekly, with new guidelines, new pictures, fixing minor spelling errors, etc. The new continuous discussion and criticism done through a, a Telegram channel connecting the book authors and the doctors who got the book. This example for upgrading the pictures in the book, this is Dubutrin's contracture. chart. This is the first version. This is the last one. This is Cafoid blood supply. This is a recent one in the book now. This is Hawking classification of the tail structure. And this is a recent one. This, the last picture has been added a few days back to the book that the FCC. Dr. Frost just added two days back or three days back to the online one. This is a telegram barcode. You can scan it to join us on the telegram group to discuss and criticize the book. That's all. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, Ahmad. And thank you very much, Ahmad. Uh, um, yeah, Ahmad has obviously spent um, hundreds of hours working on this, and it's very difficult to summarize all of that in five minutes. But uh, I think you could all tell for yourselves when you have a look at the book how very well thought are all these illustrations. And as the preterm said, um, you will be part of the postgraduate exams in FRCS is to draw. And these diagrams have been um, designed carefully so that we can, they can be reproduced on the exam. Okay, we'll move on now to the next section, which is the basic sciences chapter. is written by um, uh, uh, Shwan Hinari and Osman Katak. Um, and just to say, both senior um, uh, authors, they bo both have um, contributed extensively um, to FRCS teaching. And Shwan is one of the leaders of um, FRCS teaching uh, in the UK and internationally. So it's, it's very pleasure that he's taken part in this book. So over to you, uh, Shwan and um, Usman. Thank you very much for us. And um, we'll do a tag team as we always did with our uh, work yes. in both the mentor group and in, uh, uh, in, this, in this book as well. Uh, first of all, my name is Shwan Hanari. Uh, uh, I have the pleasure with both Usman and Hani Albarzi and Faraz to work on the basic science chapter. Um, the, uh, first of all, we are all part of the mentor, FRCS mentor group. Our entire philosophy has always been to try and help our colleagues to get through a very difficult part of their lives and their professional careers, especially the self-directed trainees. So that's, that was the, our philosophy from the beginning for the, uh, uh, sorry, my apologies, computers slowed down, uh, our entire philosophy for this chapter. So um, what is basic science? It's uh, anything but basic. We feel it's more a foundational knowledge of what we do in our practice. Um, the most difficult, it, we, th we always felt it was always the most difficult chapter to master, but it's the only table where there is a right and wrong answer. It literally me is the table in the exam where you can get an eight by just giving the right answer. There's no opinions, there's no uh, debate, there's a right and wrong always. Um, if you apply, uh, one of the things we always took away from every uh, Every time we sat at the exams, taught our colleagues and uh, courses we attended, we always noted that uh, the guys who did really well would apply basic science to their clinical practice, demonstrating and demonstrated clinical applications of the basic science. Once they've done that, they've mastered their topic. And with this philosophy in mind, this is how we wrote the chapter. And it is the largest chapter for this reason. Um, so taking that philosophy, we, topics were written uh, in this manner. We use multimedia links where we felt the topic can be explained better throughout uh, by videos, websites, and or uh, lectures we've actually given. Uh, some of them are linked to those. Some we've got links to those lectures as well uh, throughout the chapter. They, they've been written in note words, and we had a particular focus on buzzwords because for self-directed trainees, trainees from international areas, these are where the, these buzzwords are what our UK colleagues are often focused on, and understanding what these meant 
is so important and being able to use them in the right way. Um, we had, we covered traditional and non-traditional topics because a lot of the basic science, a lot of the topics that would normally not be in basic science, we felt should be in basic science. So for example, discussing uh, the uh, bone cement uh, within our chapter, we, we decided that it's not just enough to talk about bone cement, but to actually talk about bone cement syndrome, because this is not often discussed in anywhere else. Um, and on top of that, we made sure that we had the guidelines uh, for uh, how to deal with bone cement syndrome, including the recommendations from the BOA, BGS, and AAJB, which is uh, outlined. It's only uh, two small, uh, uh, sorry, three or four small bullet points. But if you can quote this in the exam, but also apply it to your clinical practice, you are providing uh, excellent uh, care to your patients. So by ad adapting the chapters from traditional way of uh, uh, teaching to a more or orientated subject towards answering questions that have been asked in the exam, but also to real, real life clinical scenarios, we felt we were giving you the best possible of uh, what we had know. Um, so why did we write this chapter? Well, we're part of the FRCS mentor group. Um, our philosophy has always been education is an act of charity. Um, and uh, we felt the chapter, the book is an extension of our work, um, linking uh, orthopods to attain the highest standard, no matter where they are, from what background or situation they're in uh, and what practice they are. We have websites, YouTube courses, lect weekly lectures and Bible practice. All our mentors, all, uh, all our authors are uh, intrinsically involved in all of this. This is why we hope we can give you the best possible uh, experience. Um, we won't allow the circumstances uh, to limit our colleagues. Um, this is why we try to strive to give you excellent uh, clinical care, uh, that you will provide excellent clinical care. Thank you. I'll hand over to my Osman. Hi, uh, thank you everyone. Um, thank you, Sean. That was excellent. I would just like to add for this uh, chapter, this was uh, actually a labor of love. So all the courses that we went to, all the teachings that we attended, all the favors we asked for, for consultants and our seniors to give us the teaching. So we kind of incorporated all that knowledge into these uh, ideal questions. But the whole purpose of writing it in this specific way was not just to allow you to make a model answer for a question that you've been asked. We all know that every question starts with a clinical scenario. Basically what the examiners want is your understanding and clinical implication of the basic science topic. So it can go into three or four different directions depending upon what question it's asked. And we made sure that we cover all the caveats of those. And it's not just to facilitate your understanding, but to retain that knowledge and to incorporate that knowledge and allow you an efficient way to deliver that to the examiner when you are asked the question. In my opinion, the our strength has been that if you, if you read this book and this chapter, and then you would have access to our YouTube video lectures. There is also weekly teaching that we incorporate. We do run a very active Telegram group in which you have access to all the authors and all the mentors who can guide you with the understanding. Um, and also the weekly uh, teaching is there as well. And best of all, we have now started our uh, Zoom um, uh, Viva courses in which we still help and we prepare you guys for the, for the Vivas. So I think all in all, I, it, it's, it's, a, it's a quite a good effort and uh, something that we thought we were lacking when we started for the exam, but thanks to all the colleagues, everybody put together this, this huge effort and it was all a labor of love and it's incorporated into something like this, which is quite, uh, uh, quite good to see it at this level now. Exactly, okay. it's the experience of our, all the authors in uh, preparing for the exam and, and the difficulties and the struggles we've had in get, incorporating this information, especially as we are self-directed trainees, which means in-depth uh, knowledge of these topics, but also in-depth knowledge of what is required to, um, to understand and to develop the higher order thinking that is required for the exam is what we have been uh, trying to do for this chapter. And to plug the importance of the basic science chapter, not that any of the other chapters are not as important, but in every table in the, in the exam, 
if you can quote basic science as part of your rationale for your clinical uh, decisions, uh, you, you will do well in the exam. Thank you very much, Juan and Osman. Yes, this is a very important chapter in the book. It's, you've managed to make this very dry topics and uh, very interesting. And as um, you said, uh, Osman, uh, it's a lot of passion put into this. And, and um, uh, it, it has become an amazing um, chapter, really, uh, to read. That's amazingly, in, in 100 um, or so pages, uh, covers all aspects of uh, basic sciences required for the exams. Uh, it's a big achievement. Thank you, guys. Um, so we'll move on now to um, um, the next chapter, which is uh, which is pathology. Um, and um, that's one of the authors, Abdullah Hanoun, as well. He's a very active uh, uh, educator, and he's uh, had the privilege of him uh, um, leading this chapter. So over to you, Abdullah. Thank you very much, Firas. Uh, thank you for involving me in this work. Um, I am here representing the other authors as well, which is Shafiq Shaban, Shuan Hinari, and you, Firas. Um, I just would like to start by describing how I joined the group. As, um, as you remember, Firas and Shuan, um, I was uh, preparing for my exam myself, and you were my mentors. And going through the Viva uh, and the teaching sessions, I found that there is a lot of information that I, I am gaining from you, which is not anywhere else any, in any other book. And that was a useful experience. Uh, hence, when Firas, you've asked us that we need to put that in a formal way for all the colleagues so that it is easier for them to access. I found this is a useful um, thing to do for my colleagues so that I benefit people the way I was benefiting from you guys. So thank you very much for involving me in this. Um, I would um, like to say that this chapter is actually an, almost like an extension of the basic science because it takes the basic science into the clinical level before we talk about the actual orthopedic part of it as it comes in the other chapters. And so it makes sense to talk about it secondly. And as you can see here, this, these are the topics that we've covered in this chapter. These are taken directly from the orthopedic curriculum. Now, obviously, this is the picture of the new curriculum, but it was taken from the old curriculum as well to try and incorporate everything that an orthopedic surgeon needs to know. Now, this is taken from the UK curriculum, but it is probably the same all over the world with slight differences based on a regional variations between the, the, the developed and developing countries. But basically, it is the same that any orthopedic surgeon need to know. So what we chose the subject and how we described them referenced, was referenced by the exam and how heavy they present in the exam. So if a topic comes a lot in the exam, we tried to give it more weight. However, we did not restrict to that as in our mind, we wanted a reference for the orthopedic practicing surgeon to come back to even when they are with they finish their exam if they wanted something quickly to get back to they can find it there um, and as i will talk to you in, uh, in in a minute we i will mention on some topics that does not come very frequently in the exam but are essential for an orthopedic surgeon to know um, we talked about the drawings we talked about the radiographs which are courtesy of all the authors so each author has done his own has presented his own experience through these radiographs and when we couldn't find anything that we could produce ourselves, we used this unique thing, which is a multimedia link, which I am not aware of any other book that uses it extensively as we do. And that gives us the freedom to get the best evidence anywhere in the world. So all what you need to do is use your mobile and use the uh, code, and then you are presented with what we feel is something that would complement the book and explain the topic in a way that would answer all your questions that we could not put in the book for a brief, you know, to keep the book brief and concise. In addition, as my colleagues have extensively mentioned, we use the guidelines as much as we can, updated guidelines. And as Firas was saying, we keep updating these on a weekly basis. In addition, Firas has mentioned, we talk about seminal papers and we try to summarize them for you so that you are ready. What other, ref other books have lacked is they either focus on the knowledge 
or they focus on the papers, or they you know, extensively write the paper so that you are at a loss of what to present in the exam. What we tried to do is rather than write all the papers that are talking about one particular evidence, we give you one paper that is more relevant, more uh, updated, or seminal that everyone should know so that in the exam, you can reference it, you can use it as a, as a reference and pass the station. And we try to avoid duplication so some topics, as, Fira, as Shuan was mentioning, cement disease is extensively mentioned in the, basic, in the basic science rather than in my chapter, which is the pathology, so that we do not duplicate and increase the size of the book. The books, sorry, the chapter starts with talking about oncology, and we try to give you a, a, a guidelines on how to describe a tumor on the x-ray, which is the first thing you will be faced in the exam. As in the exam, you will be presented with a picture, an x-ray, and then you are expected to describe it before talking about what you are going to do. So we replicated that. So the first thing you will be seeing in the chapter is how to describe the tumor and then how to, to work it according to the UK setting, which is replicated in many parts of the world. Um, then we talk, we summarize the different treatment options, including describing the different surgical terms you are expected to know, and then the classification system. We, we focused on the UK classification system, knowing that there are different classification systems in the world, again, to make the book concise. And because people who are doing the international uh, you know, version of the exam are accept, you know, the, this, this classification is still accepted. Um, we then talked about, uh, in brief, but uh, in a way that covers the, th the topic enough, all the different tumors, and then a separate chapter about how to deal with metastasis to the bones. As you can see, we used really good, uh, op you know, clear demonstrations and uh, pictures to try and make it clearer to understand the, the concepts. Um, and as I said, these, as you can see, these images are courtesy of the authors. Um, so it is our own labor, if you know what I mean, labor of love. Then we talked about complications that can occur after surgery, including fat embolism and ARDS. We talked about infections in orthopedics, trying to cover all aspects of or infection in orthopedics and how to differentiate between them in a nice way. As you can see here, you can uh, spot this uh, 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 media link. And again, because we found, for example, this reference, this YouTube reference explains the topic further and answers some of the questions that we may not be able to explain in a clear way or adds a bit of dynamic explanation to the topic. Then we talked about inflammatory conditions. The, the issue about inflammatory conditions is you can talk about it as if you are a physician dealing with, um, uh, you know, rheumatology but we tried to expand it in a way that gives the, the candidate an eight mark without uh, cramming too much information that is not so relevant to the orthopedic surgeon. Um, and again, you can see that we tried to make it as relevant to the exam and as easy to understand that and helpful for the differential diagnosis as we can. Um, then we talked about some metabolic bone diseases um, to try and, especially with, with osteoporosis, because this is an evolving topic and it involves a lot of aspects, we try to link to all of these at the same time and make it as easy and as updated as possible. Finally, we talked about things that an orthopedic surgeon can encounter, for example, patients with HIV or hepatitis or needle stick injuries. What can you do for these? And these are small things that cannot be included in any other chapter. And although, as I mentioned earlier, may not uh, feature extensively in the exam, but we felt that no orthopedic surgeon uh, should not know these. Lastly, as I said, coagulopathies and uh, hemoglobinopathy hemoglobinopathies were mentioned as well. And that's, uh, that's my lot. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Abdullah. Um, uh, this was wonderful. And as you said, some topics could be more um, asked in uh, theory and some more asked in the viva. So we tried to cover all of that. And as Abdullah said, in this book, there is no duplication of any concept whatsoever. Each concept is mentioned only once to keep the book concise. 
So there's no duplication of work uh, at all. Uh, so you're not, the reader doesn't waste their time. And I would like to acknowledge that the idea of using these uh, QR codes is, is mainly introduced by Abdullah and uh, by Amjad. Um, so, uh, you know, that made a huge difference to try to keep the size of the book um, uh, smaller while allowing the readers to, to um, access uh, multimedia, relevant multimedia um, educational uh, resources. So thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Abdullah. Um, so we'll move on now to the next um, uh, uh, chapter, which is the spine. And that's um, been written, one of the authors, is one of the leading authors is uh, Hussam al-Banna. Um, uh, yeah, Hussam al-Banna, as well as obviously that Sid, uh, Kamat, and Imran. And, um, and um, so um, we will, um, uh, we will leave it with, um, with Hussam. Hussam is one of the orthopedic surgeons from the UK. Yeah, I thank for us uh, and hi everybody. Uh, I'm here to present uh, Spine Chapter uh, on behalf of my colleagues, of course, Mr. Kapoor and uh, Mr. Imran Ali and Firas, of course. Uh, so, so the problem with the spine, that's what is enough to know about the spine. Now spine is moving to more centralized centers in the UK. Sometimes we don't get enough exp exposure uh, but in the exam, we should know what's important for safe practice. So spine could be your friend or your enemy. Your friend, if you, uh, because it is very known questions, more or less, maybe 10 questions. If you just practice it well, you will know it. Clinical cases are known, but if you missed around it because you didn't have enough exposure, it could be really hard and be against you. But in our chapter, we we try to be sensible of what we have to know and follow the rule of common is common, which is trauma, infection, tumors, scoliosis, and coda equina. And we can say myelopathy, we can say, but these are the main things, especially for the viva. So the chapter is designed as the whole book. It's concise but it's still comprehensive. It covers what's important. It will not go into the deep details, but it will give you the main thing that you, you can be a poet because it gives you the alphabetics. It is illustrative, as we said, as uh, uh, said before, there are a lot of pictures and it is, it is actually some of them are just drawn by hand. So you can do it again. There are descriptions of the, how to examine. It's not only, oh, examine this or that. And the strong point that it has been mentioned quite a few times, it's the video links. It's also interdigitating the clinical knowledge because sometimes the spine can come in the clinical, but what is required for the, for the viva? So if you mix both of them, actually you can, you can tackle any question either in the viva or in the clinical station. It has a lot of basic science because again, the, the spine is, is the, the, the need to ask anatomy, the need to ask biomechanics approaches. It comes everywhere, it comes in the clinical, it comes in the basic science station. So we try to integrate all this together. So you are embraced whenever you got uh, these questions related to spine in any station. And finally, as again uh, emphasized before, we, we included the guidelines, we included seminal papers, which if you really got it in these few pages of the spine, you can score seven, eight easily. It's not, it's not difficult with the spine. So these are the contents. So you can see, start with examination, anatomy, surgical approaches, and then it goes through the, the important chapters and we put it as per the frequency it comes in the exam. So what is before your mind got tired, you actually get what's important and stay there for the exam. 
This I borrowed from uh, my friend, Mr. Henry. I cannot emphasize more uh, these points. Uh, I think he explained before, but I just wanted to stress it and remind everybody. And the last one, it is, we did this to allow circumstances, not to allow the circumstances to limit our colleagues and also to provide excellent clinical care, which will take me to this. Believe it, believe it. I'm dead sure you can do it because we did it before you. We, we, it was difficult. But we did it and we came with uh, uh, the best from our experience and put it in that book. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, Hussam. Uh, Hussam has been uh, uh, in this project with us since the very beginning and uh, he really summarized it uh, very nicely in this chapter along with the other authors. So thank you very much uh, for taking part in the final chapter, Hussam. Thank you. And for your involvement. Thank you very much. So now we'll move on to the next chapter. It will be the pediatric chapter, orthopedic pediatrics, obviously, and that's written by Hani Baldisi, who's an orthopedic surgeon uh, based in Ireland. Uh, over to you, Hani. Okay. Obviously, Hani has taken part also in other chapters, and many of other authors have taken part in more than one chapter. Um, uh, but um, Hani, we're going to talk about um, the pediatrics now. Over to you, Han. Okay, thank you, Fras. Thank you, everyone, and Happy New Year. Uh, so I'm talking about the pediatric chapter today. And um, on behalf of Nicola Wall, she is not here today to uh, present this presentation. But I'm on behalf of her to present the pediatric chapter. Actually, uh, not all the, the trainees got training in pediatrics. So sometimes the pediatric may be your way to pass the FRCS or the way to fail in the FRCS. So a lot of candidates, like relation to the pediatric chapter, it's only the book. There is no real practicing in the pediatric. So most of you, you have the knowledge in pediatric, but once the examiner asked you clinical or practical questions, you fail in, in that. You don't know what you, what you have to, to, to say. And that is what the reason why a lot of candidates fail in the pediatric, especially in the clinical part. So, so, some candidates find like a pediatric case, especially, especially in the clinical, is a nightmare because he never deal, deal with that. He, he doesn't know how to deal with a, with a child in an exam under stress. What you do, what, what you should do the clinical examination. Even in the viva, what you should say. It will look like clinical. No one will ask you what's the DDH, what's the birth disease, but he will ask you, this is an 18-month child with neglected DTH, what you are going to do with him? What you will tell the mother? What's your plan? When you will do osteotomies, when you will not do osteotomies, and so on. So it's not <clears throat> just to, 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 like, uh, to, to vomit your knowledge in the exam, but how to think and to deal as a pediatric specialist in the exam. And that's our focus and our main target in that book to make it simple and easy to answer every question in the exam. So I will go through like, you, there is a lot of box everywhere and it's hard to read everything. And some people with very great knowledge failed, especially in the pediatric, because he cannot, like there's no relation between the knowledge and the how to answer in the exam. So, we cover the, the, in the pediatric chapter, like we start from the embryology, we cover the trauma and, and pediatric or disease as well. So thanks to Ahmed, it's very, very simple, but to the point, illustrations. So it's, it's very simple to write. So if, if the examiner asked you like how to write like, like limb bud development, it's very easy and simple. You, you, you will not ask you to be it like a, talented in, in drawing to, to write a simple picture like that, but it's very easy to understand and to present it in your exam in no time. This is very common question in the, in the exam. And I know like one of my friends failed twice in the first exam for sobracondyl fracture. And after the exam, he reads all the books and the, he, he, like, he didn't understand why he, why he failed. Because like in this case, 
like supraconductor fracture. You want to, the examiner want to hear from you special buzzwords, like what you are going to do, what's your backup, what's your like, do you have like any criteria, any guidelines of treating these patients? And sometimes they might ask you some practical question. What's the size of guide wires? How you will to reduce it? You will, like we show you your hand like that, reduce my supraconductor fracture. What you will do, how you will, you have to, to have like a scheme in your mind how to answer. And that is what, what we wrote in, the, in this book. It's very simple, no much details, but to the point. <clears throat> okay, and some this is the post guidelines, which is very important. And so we'll, we'll usually in the exam, we'll ask you about that. What's the size of K-wires? How we will do it? What, what, what's the difference between like pulseless pale and pulseless warm hand, pink hand? What's the difference? What you'll do in this case? What you'll do in this case? Are you going to do the surgery at the middle of night or are you waiting till the morning, till the morning to, to, to do that? that you have to, to have a clear like answer to this question. And that is why what we like mention here in the, in, in the book. And even how to reduce it step by step because we're aiming for high scores. So, and we aim for to answer this very common question to, to get like score eight. And actually, I got this question, one of pediatric course before my exam. And I searched it for the proper answer for this simple question. What is the pelvic hardness? How to use it? Like how, how, to, how to fit it to the patient? I couldn't find that in, 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 in any books. I, I really struggled to find, to, find, to find that. And here, like, you can see how to, what is, what is the measurement? What is the angles? How you can put the, the hip? How, how many degrees of abduction? How many degrees of, of abduction? What's the complication? What's pelvic hardness disease? That was one, one of our like question in, in, in the courses, but it's very simple. But it's, unfortunately, it's hard to find the proper answer in, in the other books. And another thing like, thanks again for Ahmed for his fantastic illustrations. So I, the, these things, it's been asking the FRCS, like, okay, you put a screw in the, in the like slip epiphysis. Okay, okay, you did the AP and the, and the lateral. What is the blind spot? And the, how you can deal with, with, deal with that? Are you going to inject a dye to, to make sure that like your screw in, not inside the joint? It's very simple and very easy to, re, to remind and recall it in the exam. And as, as like uh, <clears throat> my colleagues mentioned before, like, like a link here, just related to some videos for more uh, understanding and to make it clear to, to understand. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Hani. If you could show the last slide again you had, if you don't mind. Okay. Um, but thank you very much. Um, you're clearly speaking from a lot of passion here. And um, as you said, a lot of the way we attack this is a list difficult topics to understand and, and they're not explained in any other book so nicely. We tried, we worked very, very hard, many authors and illustrators and everyone to try to get this. Um, okay, you mean is this one or... in half? Yes, just the last one. And this it just one. shows this is a good example, for example, if you could just uh, make it uh, full screen, uh, honey. Um, so it's just for example, for example, this barcode here, there is a paper, yeah? This is an exam pa uh, seminal paper that could easily be quoted in the exam to get a candidate a full mark, basically, provided they answered all the previous questions uh, well. And so we've put the paper here, who's the author, lead author, which journal and which year. And in few lines, short lines, we've summarized the paper. So these are the, what you could mention and quote in the exam. And so it's easy to remember, easy to reproduce in the exam situation. Um, and for those who want to read the paper in full, there is a barcode here, you can scan, and that will take you directly to the free access paper online. Okay, so thank you very much again, Hani, uh, for your efforts in writing the pediatric chapter um, for, for, uh, for coming uh, forward uh, today. We'll move on now to the next chapter. It's an upper limb and uh, the author, uh, obviously one of the authors, uh, one of the leading authors is David Hughes. 
Um, so over uh, to you, David. Uh, Thank you. you. Can, uh, share screen. So David is one of our senior authors, uh, and it's really um, wonderful to have him on board with us. Uh, he's made huge changes and contributions to uh, FRCS teaching um, internationally. Go to the beginning. Bear with me. Right. So just a little story as to how I got involved. I met Schwan, um, one of the other senior mentor uh, sort of authors, uh, after an exam. Um, and we'd, been, we'd had a very similar experience uh, with going through textbooks, trying to refine all different things, and working individually. Um, and then I thought we were both unfortunately unsuccessful, but now we are. We've got through this. But with, for us, one of our uh, sort of the lead on the book as we've come together to make this concise orthopedic notes. I'm going to talk a little bit up about upper limb, but often much of you like me had similar books like this running around trying to find little nuggets of information in multiple sources, whether it be online or in old textbooks or listening to people uh, on courses and picking those together. And that's the reason why the word, the uh, buzzword concise and hopefully with um, this, this textbook, it'll help us, it'll help future people go through the exam with a lot more ease than we had. With the upper limb, we've tried to cover key topics for the FRCS exam. So anatomy, history and examination, sort of not just for the clinical, but also, uh, um, but also when you're describing things in the viva. And also important upper limb pathology, shoulder for shoulder and elbow, as well as approaches um, and arthroplasty. As my colleagues have shown, we've tried to make it easy to read with bullet points uh, rather than prose, which can often be the bane. Some textbooks I remember waking up to the middle of the night fast asleep with my head in, uh, planted on the book because as lovely as orthopedics is, um, at two o'clock in the morning, you can't always get um, uh, absorb everything. We also try to include tips and tricks, which we discovered as we were going along. And hence the reason why um, Thanks to the, the work of Abdullah and Amjad, we have those lovely little links which you can just scan in and pick up these lovely ways of different things, whether it be a video or um, a paper, to make things easier for you. And important as well for our future practice, because we want to be orthopedic surgeons. Um, we want to know about these pathologies for our future practice so that we, for example, I'm an up, I want to do shoulders. Um, I want to be able to, in the general orthopedic clinic, I want to be able to pick up uh, hip pathology, which I can pass on to my colleagues. And again, pictures paint a thousand words. Um, uh, fantastic drawings by our colleague Ahmed. Um, so with the anatomy, as you can see here, um, we've got a lovely picture of the posterior shoulder. And again, describing some of the examinations that you might come across in a shoulder exam. So these are all sort of things that we've tried to make as simple and easy and as accessible as possible. Because as orthopedic surgeons, we don't just have busy uh, working lives, we have busy personal lives as well, with family and other things in the background. Trying to do these exams um, is a lot harder as you get older, unfortunately. And these are just sort of some key topics I sort of picked up on. So we try to make it as easy as possible and understandable. So we're, for example, talking about shoulder instability, we try to make it into simple um, key uh, bullet buzzwords, so shoulder and straights, static versus dynamic, ambi versus tubs, uh, the Stanmore triangle, and also important management as well, as well as key sort of uh, pointers from orthopedic textbooks, uh, uh, papers as well, so that to help supplement your answers. And again, likewise with elbow, I'm just using this as elbow stability as an example of how we've tried to develop this, okay? And again, likewise, we've tried to include in this chapter about approaches such as the delta pectoral, lateral, posterior, and arthroscopy, shoulder and elbow. And again, we're picking up those key, uh, key tips and tricks that, again, you might find. And likewise with arthroplasty, as demonstrated by my colleagues, we've talked about the rationale for total shoulder replacements, reverse shoulder arthroplasty, hemis, and elbow replacements. The, we've provided the evidence and some key important things such as preoperative planning. That's actually different uh, in a way, because uh, it's really important in this exam now that they're asking you to think as a consultant. So as a consultant, you have to provide, you have to think about when you're planning for an operation, what you want to do, because 
both the officers exam, that's what your job's going to be. You're going to be the lead surgeon. And so you need to demonstrate to the examiners how you're going to approach every, every situation. And again, we've added, as I say, tips and tricks. For example, uh, delta pectoral approach for trauma. So we always love to quote, go for the delta pectoral approach in the exam. But sometimes we forget, actually, for a trauma, you don't need to take off subscapularis. The most important thing is to go laterally to start putting the fractures together. These are all things that, when I read in the textbooks before, I didn't realize was important for the exam. Because actually, if they're asking to, uh, they show you an x-ray of a uh, four-part uh, fracture for proximal humerus. They want to know how you're going to approach that, not how you're going to approach for a total shoulder replacement. Again, things as well, uh, which I discovered talking to uh, older consultants, such as the Alma paradox um, after cubital tunnel release, or simple things as well, again, nicely illustrated by Ahmed's drawing, drawing here, subcoracoid impingement. All these little things that might turn up in the exam, which you'll have to go through about 20 different textbooks or papers to find and discover. We're trying to bring this all together in one simple uh, book. As I say, the key thing, concise. Now, I just want to say thanks, obviously, to um, Firas, our lead editor on this, and uh, the Ahmed, uh, who's done some brilliant illustrations. And again, say my thanks to Ortho TV, our colleagues, Dr. Ashok Shyam, uh, and the rest of his team. Uh, for allowing us to present this book today on Orpho TV. All right, thank you. Lovely, thank you very much, uh, David. Uh, David obviously is an orthopedic surgeon from uh, the UK, and uh, also he's very active FRCS educator. And um, and thank you for your contribution. As David said, he's done all the hard work in really for you guys, uh, for the readers of the book. He's some you know summarized topics that could be written in books and he managed to summarize the key concepts, high yield uh, points in, in, a, in a short uh, chapter, which is um, an amazing job, not easy to, uh, to be done at all. Uh, now we'll move on to the next chapter. Um, um, and this is the hand chapter written uh, by a um, few authors. Uh, one of the leading authors is Mithat Zakri, who's a consultant um, uh, hand surgeon in the UK. Over to you, Mithat. Uh, thank you very much, Ross, and thanks for uh, the Ortho TV platform for this opportunity. Uh, many thanks for the other co-authors of this chapter uh, of the hand and wrist uh, and the uh, concise orthopedic notes, uh, namely uh, Mr. Kashif Me'mon and Mr. Uh, Sodijit uh, Sin, and yourself, Ross, as uh, the main uh, editor of this book. Uh, when uh, Ross asked me if I I'm happy to con contribute. It was really a privilege and uh, an honor to uh, be one of the uh, co-authors of this uh, nice box. Nice box, sorry. And uh, before uh, starting, I scanned most of the available uh, uh, hand and wrist materials uh, in the market. Especially, I've been as a candidate for the CCOT, for the EBOT, and uh, finally for the FRCS. So I, I, I looked what exactly the candidate uh, need, needs to uh, pass this exam. Especially uh, sometimes uh, the hand, uh, there is no opportunity to practice during the rotation or for the international candidates, it is not easy to find a hand unit like uh, the UK to uh, uh, practice hands and understand it fully. So I, I made it simplified, but in depth. Uh, knowledge which can ful fulfill all the aspects of the exam either uh, clinical uh, and it's two parts viva and uh, uh, clinical examination or uh, the theory again the uh, width of the knowledge can cover easily the enq the uh, uh, mcq to pass section one and when it comes to section two you will find the same knowledge will be uh, uh, used uh, to pass the final uh, step of the exam. Uh, so I, I try to make it easy to read, easy to remember as well as my uh, colleagues mentioned before, it's in, in, in bullet uh, style uh, uh, knowledge. I covered also uh, all the curriculum needed in, uh, for the exam and in practice as well, uh, either infection, trauma, uh, degenerative, 
uh, debutants contracture, uh, instabilities, and chronic uh, arthropathy in the hand and wrist. Again, uh, we uh, made updated knowledge uh, available because there are many things has it changed even from writing the book till now there are many uh, papers came out so uh, that's why i asked for uh, rewriting or a second edition to update the the, the knowledge with so i'm really uh, happy also with the uh, drawings despite firas asked me in the beginning i spent many uh, hours drawing myself but it seems <laughs> he didn't like my drawing, despite I'm an artist, by the way, I have a lot of paintings here with me in the room, but <laughs> you found a professional one who can do it better. And the good thing, it is unified all over the, the book because my uh, drawings will be uh, something different from which has been done. I'm really glad with everything uh, uh, in this book. Uh, I reviewed many chapters uh, as Firas asked me to look and scan if we can find any uh, of the uh, typing errors. I like really the, the contents of uh, all the chapters of the book, which I have read uh, when he was preparing for this exam. Uh, I encourage really all the uh, trainees to get this book. And I told the Firas, I am really pleased with the feedback I have seen from the uh, UK trainees, trainees about this book. It's not only for uh, uh, type two trainees or uh, overseas or non trainees uh, candidates. It's even from the trainees them themselves, they like the contents and the way it is uh, displayed. So uh, congratulations for us and the colleagues for this good piece of work and wish you uh, all the best and improving in the next uh, edition after receiving the feedback from uh, the users. Uh, thank you. Happy New Year for everyone. Thank you, Mithal. Happy New Year to you too as well. And thank you for your thank contribution. You. As you said, the book is regularly updated uh, on a regular basis. Uh, everything is, can be updated. Whenever you find anything that you can improve on um, and can improve how the information is displayed to candidates, whether from illustrations, from concepts, anything new, we always add it on a regular basis. And, um, because we, it's a self-published book, we have full control of it. There's no publisher, uh, you know, who you have to get their approval or we just in full control of the whole book. And we take responsibility for um, for everything in the book. So um, and we're in touch with the readers. So it's good to hear uh, uh, comments all the time. Thank you very much, uh, Mithat. Um, and hopefully you will um, stay with us for any future updates. Uh, next chapter is the, um, now moving to lower limb. And obviously lower limb chapter can be, um, you know, it's a huge topic and lots of topic involved in the lower limb. And so we have some um, excellent um, authors who worked very hard uh, to, to keep this book, um, this, or this chapter relevant for the exams. Um, many aspects covered. Um, one in particular I'd like to highlight is the National Joint Registry which is a very important um, to cover for exams. Um, so uh, we got Jiku, uh, orthopedic surgeon from uh, Singapore. We got um, Samir and Mansukhani and Rohan, the wife, uh, orthopedic surgeons from UK. And they, they will tell us about this chapter. Over to you guys. Um, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Jiku Hannibal. I am a hip and knee surgeon uh, uh, from Singapore. Uh, me, along with my uh, colleagues, uh, uh, co-authors, Samir uh, Mansukhani and uh, Rohan Bidwai, will be presenting the, the lower limb section, hip and knee section in the book. I would consider this book uh, as the best FRCS exam preparation finishing book. This book gives candidates all the hot topics and buzzwords that the examiners are looking for in the commonly quizzed topics in the exam. Both the hip and knee section in the book begins with a comprehensive chapter on history taking and clinical examination. The special tests and examinations are provided with illustrations and explanations. This is followed up 
by a chapter on surgical approaches, which gives the pros and cons of each uh, surgical approach and technical tips and tricks for each approach. This also gives a required information with regards to hip and knee arthroscopy and uh, relevant applied anatomy. All topics, including primary, revision, complex, and complications of hip and arthroplasty are covered and put together in a, uh, in a point of view which is relevant for the exam. Important hip and knee pathologies and related basic science are discussed with the literature support. Now, uh, Dr. Samir will uh, give a brief uh, uh, run through, uh, through the hip section of this uh, book. Thank you, Jiku. And uh, thanks, a special thanks to Firas, uh, who's given us the opportunity to be a part of such a wonderful book. Thanks to Ahmed, who has uh, contributed with such lovely pictures and illustrations. And thank you to the members of the Ortho TV for giving us this platform to project a book here. So the hip section uh, encompasses uh, various topics which GQ has highlighted from uh, examination to approaches and arthroscopy, total hip replacement and revision, Peges disease, heterotropic ossification, hip ABN, arthrodesis, FAI, dysplasia, GERF, that is get it right first time and funnel plot, and the NJR. I mean, I very well remember that uh, when we first started talking about the book, Firas said to me, uh, we need to do something different and that is what we will focus on the National Joint Registry. And, and, and like he mentioned that, you know, uh, we update the book time to time. So we first started with National Joint Registry of 2019. And uh, one day Firas messaged me and said, you know, we need to start working on National Joint Registry of 2020 and I need it by tomorrow. So there we have then NJR of 2020. So um, that's the highlight of this book that it is updated from time to time. It covers all important topics from an exam point of view, be it the FRCS, the eBoard, SICOT, or any other board examinations. The beauty of the book is it covers uh, theory topics and viva topics. A commonly asked topic in the exam is uh, for total hip replacement is the implant of choice. And you know there's a very standard answer which is given in our book. It makes it very easy for a candidate just to you know, read this and reproduce it in the exam. I mean, a lot of books give a lot of different data and it is so detailed and so extensive. But in the exam, when you have only five minutes and you have to prove it to the examiner that you know it all and you don't want to waste much time, this book gives you that. That is why it is concise and comprehensive both. From my own personal experience, you know, um, uh, why, why I highlight it's a single best question, uh, why it is important from a, a theory point of view. I myself had faced a single best question where, you know, I was asked uh, in paper one, thickness of coating of uncemented stems. And there were multiple options, zero to 50, 50 to 100, and 100 to 150, and 150 to 200. And our book gives these finer details as well, so that, you know, you just have this one book for both part one and part two. Very important topic, which is not covered by many books, is consent for hip hop, for any replacement or any surgery is that how would you consent the patient? Again, our chapter very precisely and in a concise, concise manner, you know, gives it a detail, uh, gives in a concise manner, gives an, an endless, all the important points which you need for consenting for a hip replacement surgery. So you, you have everything in a bullet point form here and you just need to reproduce it in the exam without, you know, thinking and wasting time in the exam where you have very little time to prove to your examiner. So under the THR section, there's so many topics actually com uh, you know, uh, completed. That is implant of choice, the biomechanics, templating. How does one template if the center, hip center is different and the, uh, the stem center is different? How will you compensate head, trunnion stem, bearing surfaces, rheumatoid hip, THR and tuberculosis, infection? We are up to date with all the literature. We have come... Uh, with infection, we have the latest guidelines by the Musculoskeletal Society of 2018. Then with periprosthetic fractures, the new classification system, aseptic loosening, dislocation and revision THR, what are the recent current trends and practices? We've also hit upon other important hot topics like get it right first time, 
uh, by Prof. Briggs, uh, the observations, the recommendations, and the NJR at 15 years. It's just like a summary table. This is exactly the way the book gives. It's just a summary table. The entire 150 page NJR is summarized into two pages. So all important joints are summarized into totally two pages. That makes it very, very easy for a candidate. I myself remember when I was giving the exam, I was actually struggling to get all this information. And today, little did I know that I would be all part of writing this chapter where I'm actually uh, going to bring forth the other candidates giving the exam, that uh, this is all summarized so well. Thanks to Firaz and his team. And I hand over to Rohan to take on to the knee section. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, just continuing the previous thread uh, by my colleagues from Lower Limb and my, all the authors in the book, we have written this knee chapter in a similar uh, vein uh, as has been highlighted throughout this talk. Uh, just, just for a few examples uh, out of the book from the knee section would be a simple thing like which, uh, how would you manage your osteoarthritic knee? Uh, very simple question, which can be an opening question during your clinical exam. Uh, what we have tried to do in the book is, apart from the knowledge, we have tried to emphasize on buzzwords here in the case like WHO analgesic ladder and interventions as simple as weight loss. However, we added that with evidence simultaneously. What, what happens when you do this is as an examiner, you know, the candidate is well prepared and it takes you to a level where you are almost like a clear pass. So we would say it is like a one-stop solution before the exam. Uh, coming, coming to the next uh, uh, slide, uh, Samir, yeah. So uh, we have also laid a lot of emphasis on a uh, structure wherein we, uh, apart from the knowledge, this is how it's easy for one to prepare during the exam and also to reproduce it in an exam. Like, uh, like when it comes to surgical principles of a total knee would be to restore mechanical goals, preservation of joint line, balance soft tissue and restore range of motion. This just completes everything when it regards to surgical principles for total knee replacement are very useful to reproduce during the exam. Uh, and most of the orthopedic colleagues after they finish the training don't necessarily end up doing arthroplasty jobs. And when it comes to exam, uh, this books even uh, equips with the necessary knowledge, even for a non arthroplasty guys uh, details with all the surgical necessary knowledge, which can sail you through the exam and also simultaneously it focuses on the basic science, which is relevant to the total knee replacement uh, at the same time. And finally, when we talk about uh, diagrams, we have used ample self-explanatory diagram throughout the books. Thanks, thanks to my other uh, colleagues and authors. So this gives a very good photogenic memory uh, and helps in drawing during the exam. So it will just like a, in a minimal of the time, I'm very sure this book will be very useful for the candidates when they give their exam. Uh, and I would like to thank again, my uh, authors and Firas for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you guys. Thank you, Ajiko, uh, Samir, uh, and Rohan. Uh, I think, uh, as I said, um, Samir, the NGR um, summary is a good example of what this book represents and how 150 pages of extensive data can be summarized in less than two pages. And the amount of work that goes behind that is, is um, phenomenal. And I know how, how hard you work on this, uh, Samir. So thank you very much. Um, and the next report is coming soon. Yeah. Next NGR report will be coming soon. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. So um, we'll move on to the next uh, chapter I'm now. Ready, I'm ready for it. <laughs> Pleasure. So foot and ankle chapter is uh, also one of the leading authors, Samir uh, Agarwal, and um, and uh, he's a uh, orthopedic surgeon from the UK. So over to you, Samir. Hi. <clears throat> thank you for us. It was a great opportunity for me to get involved with this. In fact, my journey started when I was a candidate myself. And I had the pleasure of meeting Firas, David, and Hussam during my, co during my courses. And these people inspired me to give back what I have learned from them. And that's where I got involved with this. So I'm presenting the foot and ankle chapter on behalf of my co-authors, Samir Hakim, Harun Majid, Prashnath Nagraj, and obviously Firas. So foot and ankle, by the time you reach in any book to foot and ankle, and if you have not done a foot and ankle job, it becomes quite difficult. So I think these are the same things which has already been said a few times that 
we have a bullet point format and we have used line diagrams. The important bit about the foot and ankle chapter was we distributed it into the anatomy of foot and ankle, the biomechanics, because the biomechanics is very pertinent to the different disorders which we come across and it helps us understand getting the things right when we need to treat it. The same biomechanics helps us in answering a question when we are asked something in the foot. The common disorders were included first, but we have not missed out even on the minor things, a couple of bullet points on the other disorders so that the whole gamut of foot disorders is co covered. I'll take the example of hallux valgus. It's a very common condition in clinical practice as well as it's a high yield topic in examination. It comes up either in short cases, it comes up either in vivas. So if you talk about the layout of hallux valgus in the book, we start with a history taking. So the relevant points, what do you need to ask in the history taking? The exact questions, examination. We tend to forget to examine the patient's gait if the patient is already sitting in the examination room. It has happened to people before us, it has happened to us and it may happen to people later on. So we don't want it to be repeated. So we have emphasized the examination of gait. We kept the examination of foot in a simple pattern, look, feel, move, followed by special test. This is just to maintain a continuity of how things go. Included a short pathoanatomy of the problem. Relevant in investigations, explaining the terms in simple manner. What does intermetatarsal angle mean? What does hallux valgus angle means? So on and so forth. Treatment. We made sure that in every disorder we have given not, we have not only mentioned non-operative treatment, we have given an option there. What is to be advised? This is to emphasize that for every disorder, there is not, necess not a necessity for a surgery. Coming to indications of surgery clearly presented, surgical options were presented with an easy to remember approach. And then as uh, the foot procedures are not extremely common to everyone, we have given an, a short outline of how the procedure is actually carried out that we need to know when you appear for a consultant level exam. This is just an example of how it appears in the book, the layout. I am one person who loves reading it from the actual book, a hard copy. We have ample space in the book, in the sidelines to write some notes. You can go on to the regularly mentioned QR codes, which always takes you to the either a proper video on the FRCS Mentor YouTube channel. I have just included the code here, which is exactly the short code for our entire channel. If you pick up the entire channel, you can browse through multiple videos. The videos keep getting added every week after our Wednesday teaching. We modify old videos, we press, give, uh, we record new videos. We also tend to update the knowledge. Uh, so that is, uh, that's all I want to say from the foot and ankle. Most of the things have already been said. Over to you, Firas. Thank you, Samir, uh, for your presentation. You've been a very dynamic um, uh, author. So thank you for taking part. And as you said, and you showed an example in the Halax Vargas, we try, the authors of this book try to create a pattern, thinking pattern. So when you face with a Halax Vargas um, disorder, disorder in the exam, in, particularly in the clinical, when there is a time constraint and time pressure, that you click quickly click on what I need to do, you need to examine this, 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 and this. And that's it, it becomes very easy rather than having to read. It's only, only a couple of pages about Halex Vargas. It covers everything for the exam. So amazing, sounds great. Thank you very much, um, Samir. Now we'll move on to, um, uh, we've got only a couple more presentation to go. Um, next one is the last chapter of the book and it's just trauma. And I know everyone loves trauma. 
And that's why we left it to the end, uh, because to keep you all interested. And, and following that, so it uh, will be a sh short recap uh, a presentation uh, uh, by um, one, of, one of the um, uh, associate editors uh, of the book and authors, author uh, Sidat um, Kapoor. Uh, so um, first we'll start with the trauma chapter. Uh, over to you, um, Amjad. So Amjad is an orthopedic surgeon in the UK and he's very um, active um, uh, author with us. Well, Farista, thank you very much for us. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ashok from Ortho TV for giving me this um, brilliant uh, opportunity to talk about uh, the um, orthopedic uh, concise notes. Um, and the chapter I was involved with is the trauma. Um, I'm just gonna start sharing my uh, screen here. Can you see my screen? Yes. So yes, yeah. You can see the screen, Ajit. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so the journey start uh, with this uh, trauma chapter was kind of a painful journey. I remember uh, you, we all know that the daunting experience of the FRCS exam, and uh, my my experience with the FRCS exam. I had really difficulty passing the exam because I couldn't, I wasn't able to express myself. And uh, then I got the help from Firas, Shuan, and the uh, FRCS mentor group. I remember the last uh, day before my, my VAVA exam, I rang Shuan and I was in a panic. And I said, Shuan, uh, what is the um, maximum transfusion uh, protocol? And Shuan calmly, he calmed me down and he was a, a very, uh, a very good guidance for, for me. He, he supported, me, supported me so well. So thank you very much, Juan. Now coming to the painful journey of this book uh, or this chapter uh, in particular, uh, I remember I was uh, working in a very uh, busy MTC and Fraz uh, asked me to uh, write the chapter. And uh, my wife was uh, pregnant and she was very sick with her pregnancy. And I remember texting for us, uh, each time for us asked me, uh, did you have you finished yet? And I said, oh, sorry, my wife is in the hospital. She, she, she required multiple hospitalization. And then the last thing he asked me, actually my computer crashed before submitting the whole uh, work. And for us sent me that face of uh, two eyes uh, looking at me. So I remember so, so well, but thank you very much uh, for us for being very patient. And thank God my uh, child, uh, my baby was born and he was healthy and uh, it was a, a very good story at the end. With regard to the trauma chapter, we know that the trauma is the bread and butter of our subidic uh, practice. And we all require to uh, have a basic knowledge of the trauma. So in this book uh, in particular, we included, we covered all the syllabus, like all the chapters in the, in the book. In this chapter, uh, particularly, we cover all the syllabus for trauma and orthopedic and uh, for the exit exams. Although we, we, we kind of focus on the UK uh, uh, part of the exam, but we, this, uh, this book or this chapter, can, I can guarantee that it can cover all the exit exams being CCOT or uh, European board exams or the FRCS International. The writing style and structure of this book is really organized and it's very organized in a bullet point style. Uh, we included very important guidance. This is in the UK mainly, the NICE guidelines and the POST, which is the British Orthopedic Association audits standards for trauma. These are mainly for UK, but all the other uh, colleges and all the other now uh, exams are including this because they are very important reference for passing uh, exit exams. Uh, as I said, we selected nice guidelines. We summarized the post uh, guidelines and we included the trauma score system at the end of the, uh, of the book. And these are important uh, being the uh, 
both some scoring and all uh, other scores. In this chapter, uh, particularly, we avoided repetition in certain areas, especially in feet, spine, and hand and foot and ankle trauma, some of the foot and ankle trauma. So feet supracondyl fracture usually is dealt in the uh, pediatric uh, part, spine trauma, hand trauma, and uh, foot and ankle like list frank or calcaneal fractures, these are dealt in the foot and ankle chapter. As all my uh, previous colleagues and speakers, they said these are the classifications uh, are simple and clear. We included the classifications here and thanks to Ahmed, uh, uh, Ahmed uh, in his illustration. I have to say that uh, Faraz asked me to do drawings. And uh, as Mithat was saying, I did drawings. And actually, I didn't have um, any drawings before, beforehand. And I started doing the drawings. And Faraz told me, oh, these drawings are good. And then uh, eventually, he didn't like my drawings as well. So I was discarded all, all the way. But uh, Ahmed, I think, Ahmed Tanobli, did a massive job by putting these illustrations quite clearly, and I really admire the, the job he did. Now I come to the very important part. Um, the seminal parts are very, uh, it's our crucial part in the trauma, uh, in the trauma viva sessions. And you need these, these seminal papers or the classic papers and related references for your evidence and almost if, uh, inevitable, you have in all the, the viva sessions for the trauma, they will ask you about the evidence if you are looking for going to uh, score uh, six and above or seven uh, and eight. So these are written really nicely with the link and we summarize the, uh, the, the, uh, the paper in a very small bullet point so you can uh, comprehend it in the um, in the viva session or the, in the exam. This is an illustration, why do you use this concise orthopedic note? Uh, you can see the illustration is quite nice. You can see the paper and how, like what is the paper and very small, few prints about the paper. Very small points to the point and can help you really to pass your exam. And if you are asked, it's, it's, it enable you to regurgitate this in the exam session, which is a very stressful situation, as we all know. Also, we included few tips and buzzwords. These are crucial for passing the FRCA's exam, especially for the UK candidates or even in the international, because it's going to be the similar similar uh, theme of buzzwords, and the examiner want to hear these things in the exam setting. Uh, we included uh, uh, surgical ap approaches and thanks uh, to Ahmed, he put this illustration in a very nice way and I can show you in uh, here in the book. So where can we find the illustration? Uh, one, one of the most important one is the cross sections. As you can see it here, sorry, it's not coming. We, as you can see the, 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 uh, the, the uh, QR codes, these are very crucial for, for, um, for the, the videos and the links. And it helped us a lot in uh, uh, acquiring the knowledge. You can see this illustration by uh, uh, Ahmed Tanobli. Uh, this, is, this is beautiful. And I think I had to admire, this is really simple to the point and you will be able to, uh, to draw this in the exam quite easily. Uh, very clear, uh, I would like to salute uh, Ahmed for, for doing this. Coming back to uh, the presentation here. Uh, so it gives you answers in this chapter. We included the answer for challenging controversial uh, um, topics, some, such as like, for example, um, humerus fracture with radial nerve injury. It will give you the, what's the exact answer for the, for the exam setting for the FRCS. And then it will give you the evidence for that as well. Now, it's an important point. We all work as a group and it's the, 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 the price we, we paid here, it's that because all the help we got from the, the previous 
uh, mentors, uh, namely Fras, Juan, and David, and all the guys who uh, set this group. This is our payback for them. Uh, we we don't get any any uh, any money for this, and we do this for to help our uh, coming colleagues to pass their exams as well. One important uh, thing, probably Fras might be able to demonstrate this. Uh, most of the the um, the course are to, to like is for administrative work. The course that we we get here is almost nothing there. Uh, we, we can include this in the new directions for uh, our new editions, uh, post-COVID uh, practice for trauma and orthopedics. I am going to uh, review this in the future. And I think uh, I would like to uh, thank my uh, co-author, uh, Muhammad Imam and Fouad Chaudhary, who are uh, not here uh, today. And I would like to uh, thank Faraz as well. So these are the, the trauma will be new, new uh, directions for the uh, post-COVID era. And we would like to include this in our new chapters. Uh, so that's all I have. Uh, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you, Amjad. That was wonderful. And Amjad has given a good example of the sacrifices a lot of the authors have put in. They are all busy with all busy professional and personal lives. Uh, and they've, they've spent a long time and many long hours working on this book. So thank you very much, Anjad, all the authors. And as Anjad said, this book is, um, is a self-published book, so we haven't had any support from any publisher. Uh, so we had to bear um, um, sort of the management, the cost of that, and all, all, all profits reinvested in the book to uh, improve it. Um, but that gave us full control of the book. And which we like, so um, that that's really the bonus, and I, I think it's worth it. Um, so thank you very much, Shamjad. Um, now um, we finished discussing all the chapters. Um, now we're going to recap, and we got uh, Sidant uh, Kapoor, who's an orthopedic surgeon from the UK as well, uh, who's been an, an amazing uh, associate editor. He's really made a huge contribution. He's he's, he's put a lot of thoughts and. Um, um, into the book and how to improve it and lift the standards of the book. So he's not only been an associate editor, but he's also uh, been an author. So he's really worked very hard. He's, he's um, behind every word in the book. Um, so I, I thank him for his contribution and being part of the team. And he's gonna tell us what he thought about this project uh, and, and, and what have we achieved. Over to you, Sidney. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for us. Uh, thanks for getting us on to this um, beautiful project. Um, and thanks Auto TV to get all the authors um, at a platform uh, to showcase our wonderfully crafted book. Um, so let me start with the, the summary of uh, this, this session today is, um, hope you can see my slides. Uh, this is the book that is the 2020 edition it was the first edition which came up in 2019 and which has been revised to a new edition with all the wonderful drawings from uh, Ahmed. It has won um, a few awards um, in the short period of time and uh, most notable of which are is ranked, currently ranked number five in the best new orthopedics books on the Book Authority in 2021 and ranked number four in the best eBooks available for orthopedics. There are some good reviews on Amazon as well, which uh, has currently about 4.7 stars out of five. And uh, that's where we usually take our feedback from. And there's this wonderful Telegram group where we provide active support for any edition, editing, or any um, mistakes that the readers can pick up. Now, not everybody is, is quite um, happy to carry a book uh, onto the wards or theaters or clinics. Uh, um, and um, currently the technology is such that they, people like to read books online on Kindle or playbooks. So it's a good thing with this book is that it's available on all the formats, including the paperback and the Kindle edition and Google playbooks, even on Goodreads. 
and uh, the the readers can choose whichever um, editions they like. Obviously, the audience that we had in mind before we crafted this book was anybody who's interested in orthopedics, particularly the trainees uh, who are going to appear for their specialist exit exams, which includes FRCS, European board exams, psychot, uh, MS orthopedics, uh, or DNB uh, exams. As we have already gone through, the topics covered in the book is it includes all the subspecialties varying from basic sciences, pathology, to spine, uh, upper limb, lower limbs, and trauma, as well as pediatrics. Well, the aim of this book was to cover everything in, in, in a book so that you don't have to search for uh, literature everywhere and you don't waste time going doing that. This is, this is how thick the real book is going to be. It's quite vast because we had to cover all the relevant topics. But um, the key thing that we have kept in mind here is that it has to be concise. And we are here for promoting bite-sized learning. I'm sure all the mentors in here would have been told once in their lifetime to prepare and present in the exams. You have to prepare each topic uh, in a postcard sized because you can't convey or you can't articulate your knowledge beyond what's written in a postcard size. That's what we're trying to do. We are keeping it concise, but we are keeping it all together in one book so that it's easy to reproduce during the exams. These are some of the positive features that we have discussed. It contains all the high yield topics for the exams. It's written in bullet point structure and it includes latest research articles, even the landmark papers, which can easily differentiate a below average average to an above average candidate during the exams. The other good features about this book is the quick response codes, the QR codes, which have been embedded and which gives you the links for the FRCS uh, mentor group videos and um, a literature as well. The illustrations um, that has been kindly produced by Ahmed has um, done wonderfully well, and they are very easily reproducible in exams and very good to understand as well. The unique point of this book is what I found is the collaborative writing by different authors, and they all of them are, are experienced in their uh, own subspecialties. The, the, the take home message that I would like to give um, uh, the book review session of uh, today's is we hope that this book uh, saves some valuable time for the candidates who are preparing for the exams so they don't have to look around for literature and um, other stuff uh, everywhere we understand it's a busy life personal as well as work um, and personal life and we want you to save time and try to gain knowledge and retain that as much as possible instead of wasting time looking for where to find the knowledge. And we, we are hoping that you can use it as a quick reference guide. You can keep a copy handy in, in your clinics, in your wards, in your theaters to help you in, in just helping you with the quick reference of the topics that you might want to read. One main thing here is I would like to mention is do not fall for the pirated copies of the book because we are, we are helping with the pre and the post purchase um, support on the Telegram group, which is quite active and which can help you uh, understand and clear um, any, any, for any particular topics that you might be struggling with. But we might not be able to give you that support if you, if you go on for the pirated copies of the book. With any product, uh, you know, we, we always like to have a feedback which can help us improve in further editions. I don't want to see the stars or the Amazon. I want you to put down the feedback, which are the good points, which are the bad points for the book so that we can take it further and continue improving on our product. And uh, before buying, I would, I would really advise you to get in touch with the FRCS Mentor Group, which Viras is going to mention to check for any discounts which might be available currently. Thank you, Firas. Over to you. 
Thank you, Sadantas. Um, again, thank you for your contribution to the book. You've been an amazing uh, associate editor to this, and uh, we look forward that you stay um, with us for any future updates. Uh, you nicely summarized um, a lot of the aspects of the book. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Sadantas. Thank you. Always, always ready, yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, good to have you. So um, I just want um, uh, just to um, share um, one slide just to say, if you can see this, um, if you email us at uh, this email, the, the frcsmentor at gmail.com, uh, we will, uh, with a reference code of orthotv, um, you'll be entitled to 25% discount on the paper book as well as the ebook. I will send you details on how to get that. And comments on the book, please uh, send them to the, um, to this group, um, a Telegram group called Concise Orthopedic Notes. Uh, also, we communicate any questions with candidates and stuff like this. Uh, also, um, if you want to join uh, any uh, our FRCS preparation group, then just send me a message on 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 the group there, and I will pass it on to um, uh, Shwan, um, the admin of the FRCS um, preparation group, um, to add you on. Um, so I think um, uh, um, thank you very much. I would like to thank um, Ortho TV. Uh, for uh, joining, uh, for uh, arranging this session, uh, particularly Ashok and Niraj. Um, and you really been very um, organized, very dynamic. You set this up um, amazingly well. So uh, very, very privileged to be with you guys uh, here um, and to be on Ortho TV um, channel. Uh, and thank, I would like to thank all the authors that have taken part today. Um, and all the authors who also couldn't take part today, there are a lot more authors who've been busy with their personal and their professional lives today, so they couldn't join us, unfortunately. But I'd like to thank everyone who joined uh, today, all the authors. Um, and, and hopefully we will be uh, in touch with um, all the readers um, and our potential future readers, everyone who want to prepare for FRCA. It's not just through our book, but through our webinars and courses and stay in touch with us and send us emails and messages and we will get you on board. So um, thank you very much. And I think that will conclude our session now. Thank you. I think Dr. David wants to say something, go ahead. Yeah, okay. sorry. sorry, sorry to interject for us. So uh, as you can, as people have seen today, there's been a number of different authors uh, who've helped contribute to this book um, and uh, 30 in total, I believe if not more. And um, from our point of view, I want to say a big thank you to Firas and Sedant, because it takes a lot to put a textbook like this together. Um, through their cajoling and poking and prodding us and reminding us on email and WhatsApp to get our chapters done, they've done a fantastic job producing this fantastic product, which we hope will help many people get through this journey far easier than we had. And um, we just want to say a big thank you to our lead for us and again to Sedant for all the hard work that they have done um, in the background getting this book off the ground. Absolutely, for us, uh, it's, it's your vision that got this book off the ground. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you, Sedant, for your thank you, thank, thank you, all. Thank you, everyone. And I think uh, Thanks, yeah. many viewers, it's good night for them, but for us in the UK, it's, uh, we've got a few more hours to go. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll have viewers from all across the globe. So it will be good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, or even good night for many of the viewers. And thanks, all of you. It was an excellent book club session. And I think this was one of the most comprehensive lectures. It is one of the earlier, I mean, initial, this is just the second book club. So it was really thorough and comprehensive. And the recordings will be available on Auto TV. We can also provide it for. FRCS YouTube channel, so you can post it there too. So I think it's a very, very good overview. And I think a lot of learning points in terms of the looking forward to the second edition of the book also. So congratulations again to editor and all the authors. And thanks again.
from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ashim. Good night. Bye.